doing just one movie this week. Easy breezy, right? Couldn't resist the opportunity to go look up some history because remember when we did the Five Denley Venoms and I talked about how I couldn't find out who the choreographer was because all I knew was that it wasn't Lau Kar Lung at that point. Well, say hi to the Venom Mob because turns out after that movie, five, maybe six-ish of those actors became so well known that they did get that title of the Venom Mob and kept showing up in other movies together. They were a small group of friends that went to the Fu Sheng Drama School together in Taiwan, it turns out. Uh, they met Chang Che at some point. He brought them over to the Shaw Brothers studio, which I mean quite literally because they, you remember the studio system had kind of a stranglehold on some of the talent. The most, okay, I don't know if most, but a lot of the Shaw Brothers talent lived there in, I think, I think they call it Movie City, actually, but on the lot, so to speak. So brought them to the lot and it seems like they didn't leave for many, many years. So here goes Kuo Shui. Lu Feng, Shang Sheng, Sun Shen, Lo Mong, and sometimes Wei Pai, I guess was the unofficial sixth-ish member of the Venom Mob, who were the main choreographers for most, if not all, of their films, which is why I couldn't find any one single choreographer for the Five Deadly Venoms. Turns out these guys were doing the work including the one we're going to talk about today, which does sometimes even go by Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, but has nothing to do with that movie we already talked about, other than also having these members of the Venom mob in it. But sometimes that's a trick that they would continue to use for decades, that if it was a movie that featured some of the same actors or kind of had the same spirit, they would play pretty fast and loose with the sequel titles, Part 2, Return of, whatever it was. But we're talking about Crippled Avengers, although I guess more accurately Crippled Heroes, although you will also see, depending on what poster I use, Avengers Handicapped. So either way, I'm sure the SEO is going nuts right about now. But also in those grindhouses, the English dub got the title Mortal Kombat, but with a C, so not to be confused with the game. But it tells the story of this group of bad guys that perpetrate a home invasion and in the process, kill the wife by chopping her legs off and then dismember the son's arms right at the elbow when the father arrives and he, being a champion of tiger style, dispatches every last one of them. Cut to a number of years later where he has raised the children of the bad guys along with his son, who he's now fashioned a pair of iron arms as replacement, and basically then tells his son to kill the children of the bad guys by way of revenge. And if you think I've just described the entire movie, that's the first five minutes of this thing. And because of that, I have no idea where the movie is going from there on out. Turns out it's going in the direction of that father and his son are now the bad guys that's just terribly bitter with the world. And in taking over this locality, they cripple for not strictly speaking protesters, but people that either speak out against them or are just rude to them. They blind a guy. They make another guy deaf and mute. They chop another guy's legs off. And in just the best or worst finale of sorts, put another guy's head in a vice until he's brain damaged. And that's the fourth crippled Avenger to this story which at the same time ends up being the most light-hearted of the Chang Che movies we've seen so far. And I don't know, I don't want to say he's taking a cue from Jackie or Sammo at this point. You know, we did already talk about Snake in the Eagle's Shadow and Enter the Fat Dragon. This was also made in 78, so it might have been a little bit of parallel thought, although they were churning these out, so I don't know. I don't know how that works out exactly. But... I do think, if I'm getting a feel for Cheng Che, it's that he's carving his own path amidst Jackie and Sammo movies, which as they're kind of fashioning their new wave with really technical kung fu and modern settings, 
Che is sticking with the fantastical in a way. In fact, not that his Kung Fu isn't technical. There's a ton of really cool sword play in this. A lot of really good weapon work, actually, generally speaking. But he kind of fills in those technical gaps with the fantastical still. You know, if, if you think about those iron arms, you know, where we're going with that. And even in spots where that might slow down the Kung Fu, you go with it. And he makes it work. But when the Kung Fu is firing on all cylinders, I think we might get some of the best choreography that we've seen in a Cheng Che movie so far. And that's not saying much, both for this series, we've only talked about three, but also for him in general, who directed 95 by the time everything was said and done. Uh, but this one, I think in large part because of the character Hiro Wong, who's played by Chang Sheng, and Chen Shun, played by Kuo Chui, again, from the Venom Mob, I think they're kind of the standouts in this thing. They're incredibly acrobatic. They have extended sequences. The takes seem longer than any of Cheng Che's movies so far in this one too. So the choreography is a bit more complicated, uh, but it's also, again, a little bit fantastical. It's almost balletic, I would say, even at times. So it gets a little interpretive, but also inches into telling a story a little bit with the Kung Fu, kind of like we talked about with Bruce Lee. I wouldn't quite put this in that ballpark, but because of the more interpretive aspects to it, you do feel like a lot more is being communicated. Whereas in some Kung Fu movies, the, the fighting kind of acts like singing in a musical, you know, the story pretty much stops right there until it's over. Here you're getting them dealing with their disabilities in different ways and fashioning different Kung Fu techniques because of it. So it's really cool. The story as it goes on might go from complicated to convoluted-ish in a way that, I mean, there's lots of twists and turns and it certainly keeps it interesting, but there's a few where you're just kind of why about the whole thing. And by the end, it irons itself out as you might imagine and the good guys win, although there's a real exit stage left quality to the last five or 10 seconds of this movie that are kind of funny, but it's a good movie. It might be number three on the list still, as far as Cheng Che movies go. One-Armed Swordsman, Five Deadly Venoms, and Crippled Avengers sitting comfortably at third, but it's, it's still cool. And again, you're probably gonna get some of the best Kung Fu out of it, so still go watch it. It does seem like a very good example of how Cheng Che would stick with these kind of fable-tinged uh, Kung Fu fantasy stories, you could say, and I will. Uh, until next week when we watch, quite possibly, Dirty Ho, which I have seen before. I watched it out of order, and I have since heard about it multiple times from other people, about it being something that I didn't catch the first time around. So next week, very possibly Dirty Ho. If it's not Dirty Ho, and you're never going to get tired of me saying Dirty Ho, then it might be Legend of the Mountain. It's the next one after that, which is a King Who and by possibly the last King Who on the list and one of his later examples anyway. So that'll be next week. I'll see you then next week for that. <laughs>